On my recent Caribbean cruise, I saw a storeholder in Dominica successfully pull the same stunt on a passenger that I had fallen for a year ago. Seeing it got me thinking about other tricks and mistakes that I should warn passengers like you about so you can avoid them. If you're new here, welcome aboard. I'm Gary Bembridge. I want to start with things I keep seeing passengers getting wrong when they're in port, starting with that stall holder. She waits for people taking pictures of the stalls, even from across the road, then beckons them over before angrily ranting about taking a picture without asking and demands that in return, you must buy something from her stall. Now I fell for it for the first time, even though I knew she wasn't in the photo because I was kind of embarrassed about the whole situation. And it's clearly still working for her. I've seen it in other markets around the Caribbean like St. Martin. So be ready and definitely ask permission if stall holders or beach vendors are in the shot. Now there are other mistakes that I see people keep making when buying from stalls and also shops close to the port. In my experience, most stalls around the ports sell the same goods and despite many saying they're handcrafted, unique or rare, many are in fact mass produced even places like China and are not local at all and also usually overpriced. So for example, those Dominica stores all sell vanilla essence, which I really like. They charge at least $8 a bottle. Once further into town, I found it's half or even less that price in the stores. It's not just stall holders. The close to port shops generally are much more expensive too. For example, in Costa Maya, I saw everything I bought in the port shopping area was under half the price in the nearby town. The other thing to watch out for in stores close to the port is the 50% off for other big discounts. Often they're basically made up promotions with spurious original retail selling prices to kind of lull us into thinking we're getting a great deal. Beware of prices and for bigger ticket items, definitely check the prices online before buying. Also, by the way, be cautious shopping where the cruise line recommends. If you do go, go with your eyes well open. The shopping advisors on board Caribbean cruises are not employed by the line and they are not independent. They are promoters for stores such as Diamonds International, Del Sol and Effie who pay handsomely to be in the program and the advisors earn commissions from what you buy. I see passengers getting sucked into buying expensive goods on a recent Honda America Caribbean cruise, for example, when I got into my cabin on check-in day, there were discount coupons and free charms to start collecting with more free ones available by visiting certain stores in each of the ports you were calling on. Now these charms are basically worthless and the stores have really skilled salesmen to pressure you into buying stuff. Of course, people in the street offering Louis Vuitton bags or Rolex watches are selling counterfeit goods and buying recreational drugs, which many ports have people offering, are a big mistake. Not just because you're probably gonna be ripped off, like a couple I met on an earlier Caribbean cruise where they bought marijuana, they found it was just basically dried up leaves. But if the cruise lines catch you with drugs, even marijuana, which is legal in some parts of the US, they will throw you off the cruise. Next, I see a lot of passengers making mistakes with taxis. Another set of things, I, by the way, learned the hard way. The first I learned in Cozumel. I planned to go to a specific beach club I'd read about. The taxi driver said, look, I know a much better place. He took me there and once in, I realized it was a dump and he was getting a kickback to take passengers there. So stick to your guns if there's a place you want to go. Another mistake I discovered is not clarifying the fare carefully. As most taxis don't have meters and you basically agree a price for the ride, but there can be a catch as I discovered. For example, in Grand Cayman, we were quoted a price, but once got to the beach, he tried to charge us double. He argued the price he'd given us was per person, not for the whole cab ride. So now I always, always check the total price. The third mistake was taking one of those taxis waiting outside the port area, offering tours for the morning or the day of the island. I did remember to check the total price, but found we kept being taken to shops, markets, restaurants and bars, where of course he was getting commissions rather than spending our time all sightseeing. So check what and where the tour will be taking you. While talking about exploring the ports, there are a few mistakes I keep seeing here too. First, 
Do not wait to book once you're on board because things will often get sold out. Many cruise lines put excursions on sale 100 days or more before the sailing. Go in and have a look at those and see what the options are, especially if your cruise is going to one of the private islands like Condo America's Half Moon Key, Perfect Day at Coca Key or Harvest Key as the popular activities and even things like those clamshells and cabanas, they sell out really, really quickly. But second, when you're looking at the cruise line tours, check the detail of what is going to happen. I made the mistake of not reading the description for an excursion in St. Lucia a few cruises back. I saw the headline saying a beach excursion for five hours. What I didn't pay attention to was it was 45 minutes each way and included a visit to a local craft center on the way. The craft center was just a big shop with a very perfunctory demonstration on how they make chocolate candles and cloth printing. We spent well over an hour there for shopping. And in the end, just an hour and a half at the beach, not the five hours I was expecting. I've since then discovered and used a site, by the way, called resortpass.com, where I found you can book a day pass to fancy resorts with beach access and pools for way less, and sometimes in walking distance or a short taxi ride away. So that's worth considering too. But whatever you do in the Caribbean, don't make the mistake of letting your guard down and be lulled into a sense of security just because there's so many people there. And importantly, assuming because the lines are calling into an island means everything is fine. At various points of time over the last few years, islands that lines visit often have been flagged as dangerous places for cruise passengers, including Roatan, Honduras, Jamaica, St. Lucia, Nassau even, the US Virgin Islands, Antigua, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Colon. Many of the governments of these islands, of course, and places dispute that they're dangerous. But some of these places do have crime, especially if you stroll out of busy and monitored places. Now, the good news is I've seen most islands are getting much more focused with police and tourist police increasingly around the ports and also in many of those popular tourist places. So, for example, in Dominica, around the port area, they have an entry controlled area where the ship docks. It's manned by both tourist police and police. So only licensed vendors and taxis are actually allowed into that area. In Barbados, for example, the beaches are really full and patrolled by tourist police who keep an eye on things, including the vendors, and make sure that they're not kind of pushing things a little bit too far. Importantly, all the ports have tourist information booths in the port area, and I always check in with them as they will have leaflets for their listed and approved and safe tours. And I also double check with them the places I'm planning to go are safe and suitable. If you prefer though not to do that and you want to check online, look at a site I mentioned in other cruise tip videos called whatsinport.com as they also list and advise on safety port by port and the best things to do. While you shouldn't go out in ports with flash jewelry and watches and other valuables, I have seen the downside though of mistakenly not taking some other things out with you when you are in Caribbean ports. So what are those? First off, these days, many islands now request we carry government issued photo ID and some check the photo ID with your cruise card when returning to the ship through the port area. Now I take my UK driver's license rather than my passport, which if I lose or damage that, it's not gonna be as problematic as if it was my passport. So remember to take photo ID with you uh, on your cruise. But equally important, always take the local port agent details with you. It's usually listed in the daily program. So take that or as I do, just take a photograph of it. If you have any issue, they are the people to contact, whether it's an accident, injury, problems with the law, you're running late to get back to the ship, or even, in fact, have missed the ship. They are the people who sort things out. But something most don't think to take or check they are clear on is which port the ship is at. Now that might sound slightly bizarre, but in many Caribbean islands, there are more than one place that cruise ships will dock. So for example, in Honduras, you may be at uh, Puerto Cortes, Coxon Hole at Mahogany Bay or Trujillo. In Cozumel, there are also three, Punta La Gusta, the International Pier and Puerto Maya. Now I was on a Cunard Caribbean cruise some years back when the couple on the table next to us for dinner, they're running a little bit late after misjudging time. They jumped in a taxi, asked to be taken to the port they were taken to the wrong port, which was some distance away. And the problem is the fare had used up 
all of their cash. They had no more cash to pay to get to the right port. Now they did have the port agent number who then spoke to the taxi driver, got them to the right port, and between them they sorted out the money to pay the taxi driver. Then there is the mistake of cruising the Caribbean, by the way, without a passport at all, even though many US residents don't have to. But when things go wrong, it can cause havoc. Now I talk about it in this video, where I dive into this and other tips cruise travel agents actually have. So see you over there to find out why you should cruise in the Caribbean with a passport.